Here are your AARP top tips on foods that fight inflammation. We're not talking about a swollen joint. This is a chronic, low-grade inflammation occurring through your whole body. This plays a role in many diseases, but a Mediterranean-style diet has been shown to help. Here are some foods that may help fight inflammation. Feast on fruits and vegetables. They help keep your body healthy with their vitamins, minerals, and beneficial plant compounds called phytonutrients. Many of these foods have antioxidants, which may help fight heart disease and cancer. And their fiber feeds the inflammation-fighting bacteria in your gut. Heap on herbs and spices. Basil, dill, oregano, parsley, rosemary. Simply go down the line of those little jars in your pantry. Rich in antioxidants, many spices and herbs may reduce inflammation. Sprinkle generously on your salads and soups. Enjoy extra virgin olive oil. The ancient Greeks knew this was good medicine, but didn't know it was because of anti-inflammatory compounds called polyphenols. The most potent oil is the extra virgin kind, which gives you a little burn at the back of your throat. Nibble on seeds and nuts. They're rich in healthy fats and contain plenty of antioxidants. Some nuts also help reduce LDL cholesterol, aka bad cholesterol. Walnuts are especially beneficial. Savor seafood. If you're American, chances are you don't get enough EPA and DHA, two types of inflammation-fighting omega-3s that are abundant in fish. The American Heart Association recommends two servings of fatty fish weekly. Some good choices are salmon, sardines, and albacore tuna. Have whole grains. Try brown rice, barley, bulgur wheat, millet, and whole rye. Your gut bacteria loves all this fiber, which helps produce anti-inflammatory substances. Lunch on legumes. They've got B vitamins, minerals, and fiber. Eat black beans, chickpeas, kidney beans, and lentils. And soy foods are high in inflammation-reducing isoflavones. Consume coffee, tea, and dark chocolate. Seems too good to be true, but they all have those plant-based phytonutrients that help reduce inflammation. All three have caffeine, too, which in moderation appears to reduce inflammation in your brain. For more tips on eating right, visit aarp.org health. Hi everyone, welcome to day three. We are back. Today's diet is all about paleo. Living off of the foods of the land that man once ate before we invented fast food restaurants and processed foods. So what does the paleo diet include? Well, meats that aren't processed, so lean meats, any meats that didn't go through some sort of processing. So that means lunch meat is out the door. Most fruits and vegetables are going to be okay. Of course, we're watching out for those super high starch vegetables. But the difference between keto and paleo is that paleo actually does allow for some of those starchy vegetables um, to be invited into the diet. So we can bring those back in here for day three. Fruits are going to be okay. Nuts are going to be okay. Uh, and our really healthy oils like avocado oil and coconut oil are going to be okay. Nothing processed. Say goodbye to sugar. Um, but other than that, the biggest thing about the paleo that turns people away, I think, is dairy. Now, some people call um, the some people will do their paleo and eat dairy on it. And we call that cheater paleo, and mm -hmm. that is pretty common. If you just can't give up the dairy, it doesn't mean that it's not paleo it just means it's your version of that paleo but still if you were eating those other items that you should be on the list you're still actually eating very healthy even if you're integrating the dairy into it so what are we making today we're going to make a paleo tortilla chip and we're going to go ahead and have that to eat with our homemade quick smash guac and our lean beef and cauliflower rice bowl so instead of using a traditional grain rice, which would not fall into the paleo um, diet, we're going to use cauliflower in the place of that and season that in the pan and treat it just like we would a rice. It's going to get some seasoned meat on top and then a little bit of that fresh guac and even some sauteed peppers at the end. So we're going to start first with our tortilla chips and we're going to make this into a batter that's a lot like a pancake actually. I've got my cast iron skillet on here. It has a tiny bit of oil in it just to hopefully keep from sticking. Um, and the first thing we're gonna do is preheat that. And we're gonna preheat that to low because we do wanna have a, a pretty hot pan when we start this off. So first thing we're gonna do is mix our uh, half a cup of almond flour, half a 
cup of tapioca flour. A little bit of salt, just a half a teaspoon. We're using the kosher salt as you And then a little bit of turmeric powder. So turmeric, as you know, is very, very healthy for you. It's one of the best spices that you can integrate into your diet. Helps fight off cancer, huge antioxidant benefits, lots of good stuff going on there. For today, we're going to use it because it's barely noticeable in flavor when you use it in small amounts, but it's going to give us, give our tortilla chips that yellow color that we're used to seeing. All right, and now that I've mixed all of my flowers kind of together, since we can't have dairy in our paleo diet, we're going to rely on the use of some coconut milk. So we are using a full fat coconut milk here to make our batter chips. I'm just going to get that mixing all around. We're going to do about a quarter of this in the pan at a time. If you wanted to add other seasonings here, those do fall within the paleo diet, so please feel free to season up your chips as needed. We're just going to make a very plain chip that can be used for any kind of dip or dish that you want to use. All right, that looks pretty good. And I have a little spoon over here as well. Checking on my pan over here. I've got just a tiny bit of oil in the pan. I'm going to kind of move that around, make sure it's evenly distributed. Kind of like you would if you were making pancakes in here. Speaking of pancakes, you can now buy like a keto and a paleo pancake mix at the store. So they've made it a lot easier. And keto pancake syrup, which is the hard part usually. We're going to add about a quarter of our batter into the pan. You do want to hear that sizzle. I'm trying to thin it out in the pan. And what we're really doing is kind of making like flat. And you want to try and get it as thin as you can. And you can notice that it's setting right away. So after you get it down, you can't move it too much. Turn my heat up just a little bit here. And we're going to wait till it sets on bottom, and then we're going to give it a flip after about a minute. You can notice that it is getting like some of those little bubbles in the pan, just like we're used to seeing when we make our pancakes at home. And then if you have a smaller pan, obviously you might have to do some more batches, but you'll work through the same way. Yep. Just nice and thin, whatever pan you got, its size is going to work great because we're cutting it into chips afterwards. Yep, and you really don't want to go too big or you're going to be like me and trying to find the right tools where you can flip your <laughs> giant pancake. Always the problem with big pancakes too. Yep. And we don't have to have too much char on our chip. We're just looking for a little bit of char, a little bit of color, a little bit of caramelization before we flip. Because these are going right back into the oven and they're going to get baked. And so I do have my oven set at 400 degrees. After we cut our chips, we're going to put them on a piece of um, parchment paper on a sheet pan. And then we're going to bake them. So we're looking pretty good here. I'm going to give it a flip and then y'all be able to see what it looks like. Pretty awesome. That yellow color is really coming through after yep. it starts to cook. That turmeric powder. A little bit goes a long way, though. Once you mix it with any kind of liquid, too, it's going to stain whatever it touches. So just use the caution. So on deck and ready to go, I've got my sheet pan lined with parchment paper. And I've got another backup ready just in case that won't hold all of my chips. You could use scissors to cut your chips apart. You can also use a knife. Pizza cutter if you need to. Yep, that's I'm just going to get a little bit more color on the bottom, and then I'm going to do my second batch. Don't be scared to add a little bit of oil into the pan. It's not going to hurt anything. And, of course, we're using um, our healthy oils that fall into the paleo diet. So you're looking at olive oil, you're looking at your avocado oils, and you're looking at your coconut oils. All right. That looks pretty good for number one. So what we'll do is go ahead and get our second batch into the pan.
spread it around a little bit. You gotta be quick. Good like to uh, set up a feed. Spread it around. There we go. Once you've done this, you guys can make crepes though too. It's a perfect vessel. All right. We're just gonna do two batches because we have two big pans for here. But again, if you have a smaller pan, you might have to do four rounds. Looking pretty good here. Trying to make sure I'm not having any sticking issues, and I'm not. And flipping over. All right. So over here, I'll go ahead and cut this one here, and we'll get it ready for our sheet pan. So I'm just going to cut it in half. And my end goal here is to have a tortilla chip shaped into a train. Gonna lay those out single file, single layer. And our other one here. Get there. We'll let it get a little more color on the other side. The paste is good. It's a little bit of nuttiness from the turmeric seasoning. But it's going to make perfect vessel for just about a, got a nice tortilla like whip, which is great. Because yeah. you can't have corn on the paleo diet. So this is about as close as you're going to get. Okay. We'll get these in the oven. Oven is set for 400 degrees. If you want to brush them with just a little bit of your coconut oil or olive oil and then douse them with salt, I'm going to add these two dough. But, um, you can certainly do that as well. Smell nice and nutty, don't they? Yeah, they do. Kind of buttery. <laughs> Without the butter. All right. We are moving right along. Next up, our beef and cauliflower rice bowl. Lots of ingredients in that there, folks. Lots of spices and lots of seasons. Just going to add a little salt to my chips. Send those off to the oven for about 10 to 12 minutes at 400 degrees. All right. And next, I'm going to grab all of my goodies for my cauliflower rice bowl. Lots of stuff going on here, folks. So the first thing we're going to look at is our cauliflower rice. Now, I bought this right out of the freezer section. I love that they sell rice cauliflower now because it makes it just much easier to use at home in anything, Asian, anything Mexican, etc. This particular one, I couldn't find a plain rice bowl when I went, or a plain um, rice cauliflower when I went yesterday. So I got one that contains carrots and scallions. They have all different flavors now to go and blend in with all different ethnicity food. I thought that the one that was uh, carrot and scallion went best with our Latin kind of flair today. So that's what we're going to go with. I'm going to actually use a wok as my uh, preferred cooking vessel today. So I have that ready to go right here. In my wok is just a little bit of coconut oil. And I'm going to go ahead and fire that up and get it ready. So into the wok is going to go my riced cauliflower, and I actually saved the green giant bag. This is the one that we're using today. The cauliflower rice veggie method. And again, any flavor you want, really. Coconut oil is going to get nice and hot in our pan, which we're working on right now. You can use a wok, you can use a skillet, you can use a cast iron skillet. Any of those vessels are going to work good for you. And then I've got my spice mix that's going to go into my cauliflower rice as well, which is going to be a half a teaspoon of onion powder, a half a teaspoon of garlic powder, and a dash of chipotle powder. That's going to go into my rice after I've been cooking it for a while. And then I'm also going to need one tablespoon of 
jalapeno pepper. And so I want to go ahead and get that minced so that it's ready to go into the pot. Um, after we've got our pan all nice and hot, we're going to add our cauliflower that's been riced into the pan. Hear that sizzle. And we're going to cook that for two to three minutes in the pan and let it get started. In the meantime, I'm going to chop up my jalapeno pepper. And I just need a tablespoon. So that's probably just going to be about half of this cup. If you really like to kick it up enough and you want to feel the heat of this dish, then you can leave some of your seeds in. The heat from this pepper is actually in the ribs and not the seeds. But since the seeds are connected to the ribs, we get a common misconception that Back in, back out. Oh, okay. good. Okay. We just made chicken corn. I think they air on like point. Fine. You too. So if you're just coming back to us, um, I've got my cauliflower rice going. It's been on for just a couple minutes. I've got it steaming now. I've just got a piece of foil or a lid at home if that works. Um, over that to kind of steam the cauliflower rice and make sure that it's softened properly. I've got my Tablespoon of jalapeno pepper. This is an optional item if you like to um, have a little bit of spice. <coughs> and then I've got my lime on deck, which I'm giving a good roll. <coughs> I'm going to cut this in half. And I've got my juicer over here on deck and ready to go. So the next step here is to uncover our rice, add the jalapeno pepper, salt, seasonings, which is our onion powder and garlic powder and then our lime juice. And then cook for another minute or two until it's the desired texture. We're then gonna remove the cauliflower part of this dish into a bowl off to the side so that we don't have to dirty more pans. The next step to this is to add a little bit more coconut oil into the pan. Then we're gonna go in with the beef and start that process. <coughs> so, now that that's done, Add in our jalapenos, and again, I like it spicy, so I'm putting the whole thing in. That's up to you. I'm adding in my onion powder and my garlic powder and just a tiny bit of the chipotle seasoning. Which could be cayenne or even just like chili powder if you want to keep it really mild. We're going to saute that into the mix. Smells wonderful in here. Lots of good stuff going on there. All right, and the next on deck, I'm gonna get out while this finishes up here. My one pound of grass-fed beef. So get 
as lean as you can possibly find. I love that Laura's lean beef, and that's what we buy here. You're going to need a little bit more of your coconut oil to free oil up your pan. You're going to need some sea salt. Then in our spice mix for the beef, we've got some onion powder, garlic powder, cumin, chili powder, chipotle powder, a little bit more chipotle powder if you like the spice. You can always taste it and add that later, though, too, so don't feel like it has to go here. Um, and then two tablespoons of tomato paste and then four tablespoons of water. So I've got all of this ready to go. The last thing that we need to add to our rice here is our one tablespoon of fresh lime juice. So in that goes. I don't think that was quite a tablespoon. I'm going to add just a touch more. There we have it. We're going to stir that around and then we're going to remove our rice from the pan so that we can use the same pan, which has all of our delicious seasonings in it, by the way, to cook our beef. So off this goes. This smells amazing. All righty, and then we're going to add just a little bit of coconut oil to the pan again. About a tablespoon. Seems to work well. Get that heat back up. Get ready for the next step. Our pan is already hot, so we don't even have to waste any time heating anything up. And into the pan goes our grass-fed ground beef. Now, of course, this could be a ground chicken, if you like, a ground turkey. There's a lot of viable options here. in your pan, but we actually are going to save the, the fat right in the pan in this recipe. After we shut our beef nice and brown, and it's not raw anymore, we're going to add in our tomato paste, add in our water, add in our seasoning. Basically, cook it like a sloppy joe. Right, Joe? Yeah. Can't confirm. transfer heat really well, but so do wok. They cook your food a little bit faster, and that's probably another reason why we love them so much. So as you can see, we're working with super lean beef today. I've hardly got any fat in the pan, which is good. That's exactly what we're looking for. So in go our spices. And that was the onion powder, garlic powder, cumin, chili powder, chipotle powder. In goes our two tablespoons of tomato paste. All righty, and then our four tablespoons of water. Get all of that in there. Mix it all around. And that fat's really going to help that move through the pan. All of those seasonings, that tomato paste, literally does look like a taco meat or a sloppy joe. <laughs> but a healthier version. Healthier version of a sloppy joe. No sugar. No sugar in the table. Okay. Wow, oh, that looks amazing. It's begging me to taste it to make sure that it doesn't need any more of those. That's wonderful. This needs a tiny bit of salt. A little bit of pepper. Good. Remember, I put all that jalapeno into my rice, so I don't want to overdo it with the spice. All right. That's looking pretty awesome. Guess what? Same process. 
and slice up my onion and my pepper. One large onion sliced thin can be red, white, or yellow, don't care. One large red bell pepper. <clears throat> so on the red bell, I'm gonna butt right up to the stem, take that off, remove the inside. I like a smaller knife for this. And then I like to go right in half, which allows me to get in there and get that stem out. Toss all that off to the side. There we are. Get all of those white ribs and pits out. And we're gonna slice these thin. I like to do this with the inside of the pepper facing up. I feel like the knife grabs onto that a little bit better and allows me to have a less slippery situation and a better grip on the pepper. And then we're gonna get a little bit more coconut oil in the pan and we'll get these peppers going right away. You could use any color pepper here. Red's just gonna look pretty because we already have green and a lot of other colors. About a tablespoon of oil. Let's fire that guy up again. Medium high heat is what we're looking for. And now when our peppers and our onions cook, they're gonna just eat up all of those wonderful seasonings that came from our beef, that came from our cali rice. We wanna hear that sizzle when we drop it in. Back to the onion, same way we always do, cut our top off, lay it down flat, right between that root, and then peel. And we're slicing our onion thin too, so we don't need to do the dicing technique here. Instead, we're just gonna peel, keep it in a half moon shape. And again, the more crunch you can leave in your pepper and onion, the more health benefits are gonna stay represented. Because as we cook our veggies more and more, we cook out all of those nutritional benefits. If you want a great shortcut here, buy a frozen onion and peppermint. That would work wonderfully. Those are our course beets. Ooh, I'm excited. Throwing my onions right into the pan. How do they look? They look. Awesome. Look, well, you guys can hear it. You can pack it on the cutting board. Pretty crisp for a fake board. <laughs> right now. Not fake, just healthy. Not fresh. Screw that. All right, look at this. Our peppers and onions are just getting a nice color on them because they're soaking up all of the fat and all of those seasonings and flavors. You know, when you're working with a diet like this, you're cutting out a lot of those things that we typically flavor our food with. So you really need to rely on good, strong techniques here to bring the flavor back in. So what we've done is built that fond, F-O-N-D, on the bottom of our pan here with all of our meat seasonings and all of our fat and our gradual seasoning of the pan throughout this entire dish. And now we're passing that on to the, to the peppers here and the onions. Giving that just a little bit of saute, and let's see where we're at. Salt and pepper on those. Last thing we gotta do is make our guac, and then assemble our bowl. So let's do that next. I've got a little bowl on deck here ready to go. I've got my two avocados. I'm looking for them to be pretty firm, but still very soft, but not too soft. I've got my cilantro. I'm a big cilantro fan, so there's a good chance I might put in more than the recipe calls for. And then I need three tablespoons of onion mint. I don't think I saved it. Oh, it's right here. 
All right, we're going to use a red onion just because it's prettier for that. So two avocados, three tablespoons of onion, a large garlic clove, which I have here, one tablespoon of jalapeno again, and then one and a half tablespoons of fresh lime juice and two tablespoons of fresh cilantro. So we've got all of that on deck. Looks like our peppers and onions are ready. I'm going to turn those off, set them off to the side. Now we just got to make this quick block, and then we have all of our components to assemble. So let's start with the avocado. We're going to go ahead and cut through, find the pit with our knife, work our way around the pit in a circular motion, twist like an Oreo cookie. Perfect up. And let's do that again. Twist. Another pretty darn good one. Give it a smack. Never grab this with your hands. Trust me from experience. That's not a good idea. Little pat, little twist. Pull those pits out. I've got my tablespoon on deck, which is the best tool to be able to scoop out that avocado from the center. And I just kind of start right behind where the stem was and then move this way. That way I don't have to worry about getting the stem inside of my quick block. There we are. And then my favorite tool for this is the potato masher. But I do like to get the lime in there first because the lime is so citrusy, it actually helps break through the fat of the avocado, therefore making it much easier to mash it up. So let's get that lime in there with the avocado first. We're looking for one and a half tablespoons. I find that a small lime usually gives you about a tablespoon or a little over. So we're going to be right where we need to be with this one. All right, so we got that in there. We've got our masher on deck. We're going to give this a good mash. Get it moving. There's nothing better in my world than fresh smashed guacamole. And if you don't eat it all today, no big deal. Put a little plastic wrap and press it down right on the top of the guacamole in whatever vessel you store it in. That'll help keep the air out. Next day, if it has a little layer of brown, just scrape the top with a spoon. What you got going on underneath is just fine. And the discoloration is actually just caused from, um, you know, air getting into the avocados. But it actually doesn't change the flavor. But most people don't want to eat that. Just scrape it off. All right, this is like a pretty good consistency there. So now we're going to add a little bit of salt. A little bit of pepper, our jalapeno and garlic, and again with the jalapeno, if you are not into spice, you can skip this all together. You could do a bell pepper if you want. A lot of times we put corn in our guac, and everybody really loves that. But I the think, you, yes, I do think you want something crunchy represented. Which is why I like to usually do my avocados with the lime and get that where I want it to be and then go back and add in all of my crunch. So I'm doing a little mince in here on my jalapeno. Into the guac that goes. And again, I'm adding all of it because I love spice. You can leave some of that out if you don't love spice. We're not going to need much of our onion here, so I'm going to Cut in half, toss half aside for a rainy day. Same technique as always with our onions. Couple horizontal cuts and then several vertical cuts. Bringing us to a perfect little dice here with minimal effort. probably good for the amount that our recipe calls for. And then next we have some cilantro. This calls for two tablespoons. We'll do a little quick shape, just like we did parsley. Date. 
any of your big stems you can try to get rid of. Leaves is what we're looking for here. Still haven't found much of a good use for those cilantro stems. We did put them in a dip one time and blend them. That was the only use we ever really had. Alrighty, and after we've got our leaves all ready, gonna bunch those into a little ball as tight as you can get. Run your knife across it. And get that broken down. All right, we've got our avocados, we've got our onions. Last we need is our garlic, and then our guac is complete, and we will assemble, assemble this uh, delicious bowl. Garlic is left, giving it a little smash. If you've got an itty bitty tiny piece of garlic, then you can use a little bit more. If you don't want to mess with garlic at all, you could substitute a garlic powder. Even a garlic salt would just back your regular salt out of there to accommodate if you're using garlic. I'm getting as small as a mince as I can. I don't want to run into a big old piece of garlic in my guacamole. We'll scoop that up, put that in. Got our little spoon here on deck. Beautiful. A lot of times I put tomatoes in my guac, but in this particular instance, we've got tomato paste in with the beef. So I felt like that acid was represented here. So we're just going with the straight, straight guac here, which is a beautiful color. All right, and now it is time to assemble this delicious bowl. First things first, we're going to want to get a nice scoop of that cauliflower rice. If you're going to eat this tonight or you want to eat it right away, you might want to throw that back into the skillet and give it another little reheat if you want. So, a couple scoops of that cauliflower rice right into the bottom of the bowl. Yum. A little bit of that ground beef represented on top. I have been seeing some paleo wraps and stuff around, so that's definitely an option if you want to show that wrap. But I really dig just eating things in the bowl like this. Mm -hmm. Celebrating the vegetables. It's all hunter-gatherer in that bowl. It's meat and it's veggies. So some bell peppers. Our guac on top. As they sat and cooled, they got even more crispy. Ooh. And there we go. We have our cauliflower, rice, lean beef, paleo, Mexican taco ball. Oh. <laughs> I hope y'all enjoyed our three days of demos on how to get on the right track for wellness in 2022. We hope to see you all back in person soon, but we're glad that we at least get to visit virtually and make these um, videos for you. Hopefully everybody had a wonderful new year. We'll look forward to seeing you soon in 2022. Take care, everyone. Thanks, everybody. You might already know heart disease is the top killer of Americans every year, and it's more likely to affect older adults but you're never too old to lower your risk. And focusing on heart health can help lead to better health overall. Here's how to form heart healthy habits. Fueling up with fresh, nutritious food is a given. A good rule of thumb is to be wary of packaged and processed foods and to steer clear of trans fat. It often shows up as an artificial byproduct in processed or deep fried foods. It has no nutritional value and raises your risk of heart disease, diabetes, and certain types of cancer. You may not even realize some of the foods you're eating have trans fat. FDA regulations allow food products with less than half a gram of trans fat to be labeled as having zero grams per serving. 
Common snacks with hidden trans fat can include non-dairy creamer, microwave popcorn, and frozen pizza. Before you dig in, check the nutrition facts label for partially hydrogenated vegetable oils or shortening. That's a sign that there's trans fat inside and should be avoided. Poor diet can lead to heart problems, but so can not staying physically active. Older adults should get at least 150 minutes of physical activity a week. Simple walking counts toward that goal, but try to move fast enough to make talking difficult but not impossible during your workout. Heart rate raising tasks like vigorous yard work also qualify toward your weekly goal. Even short bursts of exercise can help keep your heart strong and your blood pressure in check. A 12 minute workout gets your heart rate up and sustains it effectively enough to see a benefit. Do aerobics, speed walk, or even dance when you have small chunks of time throughout the day. And don't discount the importance of a good night's sleep to protect your heart. Your blood pressure actually drops while you snooze. Getting less than seven to eight hours a night raises your risk of a heart attack or stroke. Daily discipline is key, but an annual flu shot can help protect against catastrophe. People over 65 or living with heart disease could face a life-threatening risk of heart attack from the extra strain that a severe case of the flu puts on the heart. Best to play it safe and get your flu vaccine each fall. Here's to never missing a beat. Find more ways to keep your heart healthy at aarp.org health.